In the last video, we talked about hypothesis testing in general. Now we're going to talk about hypothesis testing in the case that we want to estimate the true proportion of our population. So in a hypothesis test for one proportion, the hypotheses are H0, the null hypothesis, is that the true proportion is equal to some value we're going to call P0. P0 is the assumed value of P. And so you might be thinking, well, why not just use the letter P for that value? But remember that P is the true parameter. We don't know that the null hypothesis is correct. So we use P0 instead of P so that we don't get confused. The alternative hypothesis is that P is greater than, less than, or otherwise not equal to this assumed value of P. If n is large enough, the central limit theorem kicks in, and we know that our P hats are going to follow a normal distribution whose center is our supposed true proportion P0, and whose standard error is given by the square root of P0 times 1 minus P0 over n. Therefore, our test statistic is going to be the z-score of our sample's p hat. And remember that z-scores are calculated as the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. The alternative hypothesis is going to determine how we calculate the p-value. So we know that the p hats follow a normal distribution centered at p naught. So let's say that my p hat is whatever this is. All right, I'm going to draw three different pictures here. They're not all the same. They should be, but they're not. And in my first case, I have the alternative hypothesis be that the true proportion is less than the supposed uh, true proportion, the less than the uh, null hypothesis's value for the true proportion. So when I calculate the p value, I'm going to calculate the probability that I see not only my p hat, but something less. We call that something more extreme because it is even further away from our uh, null hypothesis value in the direction that we think is correct. So I'm going to use the normal CDF from negative 9999 up to my test statistic, whatever that is. Remember, this is uh, the test statistic in the standard normal distribution. All right, now notice I'm going to do this regardless of whether or not my z-score was positive or negative. No matter where it is, if my alternative hypothesis is that the proportion is less than is what claimed, then I'm going to go from negative 9999 up to my test statistic. However, if my alternative hypothesis says that the true proportion is greater, then I'm going to go above my test statistic, as in this picture. So in that case, I'm going to have a normal CDF from ZC up to positive 9999. And notice that in the picture I drew, uh, since my P hat is negative, my alternative hypothesis is probably wrong, right? Or at least and it's not probably wrong, but my sample doesn't provide any evidence for it. So it makes sense that my P value is actually going to be pretty big. Now in the alternative hypothesis where I say that the true proportion is different from its claimed value, I'm going to have to go in both directions. So I'm going to take the tail that is further from my true z-score, and then I'm also going to do its mirror image on the other side. I'm going both above and below. All right. Well, instead of doing two separate normal CDFs here, I can use the fact that the normal distribution is symmetric, and I can do two times the normal CDF of the absolute value of my z-score up to 9999. It has to be the absolute value because the thing you're doubling has to be less than 50%. But what this is going to do is it's going to count the probability that you get something further away from your true, uh, your supposed true parameter in either direction. Let's do an example. 
On 100 tosses, a coin that is supposedly fair comes up heads 73%, 73 times and tails only 27 times. Is there evidence that this coin is biased towards heads? So our null hypothesis is going to be that the coin was fair. In other words, that P was 0.5. In this case, P naught is 0.5. That's the assumed value of the parameter. Our alternative hypothesis is that the coin is biased towards heads or that H0, uh, this should be an HA, is that P is greater than 0.5. Next, we're going to calculate our test statistic. If the null hypothesis is true, then the P hats follow a normal distribution centered at 0.5 with a standard error that's equal to the square root of 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5, which is of course just 0.5, divided by the sample size 100. So we get the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 100, and that is equal to 0.05. Then our test statistic, which we denote ZC for Z critical, is 0.73, that's our P hat, minus 0.5 divided by this standard error. 0.73 minus 0.5 divided by 0.05 is 4.6. So we have a z-score of 4.6. Our sample proportion is all the way out here. Well, remember that the p-value is the measurement of how likely we are to see our p-hat, which remember has a z-score of 4.6, or something even further away from the mean. All right, so in other words, if the null hypothesis is true, how likely is it that our sample is going to have a proportion of heads equal to or greater than 73%? So the p-value is the normal CDF, these are z-scores now, so I call my mean zero instead of 0.5, the normal CDF starting at 4.6 going up to quote unquote positive infinity. Four point six, nine 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 nine, and we get point zero 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 two one. So there's a very low probability that if the null hypothesis were true, that we would see a sample like ours or more extreme. All right, now it's time to finish our hypothesis test. The, fourth, the, the second to last thing that we do is interpret the p-value. The p-value is interpreted in the following way. We say, if the null hypothesis were true, we'd see our data or more extreme p value times a hundred percent of the time it's really just a sentence that tells you what the p value means so if the coin were fair we want to report the null hypothesis in context so we say that if the coin were fair we would see our data or something more extreme 0.00021% of the time. Now we state our conclusion. Since our p-value is less than 1%, there is very strong evidence that the coin is biased towards heads. We always put our conclusion in terms of the alternative hypothesis. There is some amount of evidence that the alternative hypothesis is true.
So since our p-value was so small, if the coin were fair, our sample is so rare that that makes it strong evidence that our coin is in fact biased towards heads.